Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I am the Dream Decipherer and I help you to crack the code of your sleep and dreams so you can sleep sound and dream deep. This evening, this is a whopper <laughs> session this evening. There is a, um, three dreams, one dream with two parts. So let's get into it and find out what these temples, gangsters and computer games all have in common. In the first dream, the dreamer reports that uh, his, the Buddhist temple, our, he says our Buddhist temple, who our, us in this case is unknown, but he went to the a Buddhist temple with a friend as it was being attacked regularly and they were unable to defend it properly since the teacher or Sihu had become ill. Finally, the decision was made with regret to uh, dismantle the shrine and to close down the temple. So that's the end of the first dream. In the second dream, the dreamer first of all reports that this dream had um, many parts and that there was a feeling of deja vu as if he had dreamt some of it before. But in any case, the football team, soccer team, Arsenal, lost five to one um, to a, another London club, West Ham, uh, which took place at the Olympic Stadium, where the dreamer encountered a cousin of his um, who was, for some reason, bumped into the, uh, to the manager of the winning side um, by the, the team tunnel. And they did their, that part um, of the first part of the second dream ends. In the part two of the second dream, the dreamer reports being parked in a, a side street near an Ikea store waiting for a plague rave to begin. And while they were waiting, a young woman who looked somewhat like um, or reminded the dreamer of uh, the singer songwriter Billie Eilish, or Eilish, sorry if I mispronounced it, um, said that the things were probably going to get started um, on a terrace um, in the south of the city. Meanwhile, while they're waiting, some gangsters turn up in a limo. Um, they apparently there was a bunch of young guys that were dressed in fur coats and looked like gangsters from the 70s sometime. While the dreamer thought that you know this was a situation that he wouldn't be able to, to deal with, the cousin was very, very relaxed, very chilled, wasn't worried. And the police drove by and the cousin drove the, the car, his car, into, into a back alley and parked it. But they were trapped. They were in a cul-de-sac and they, the dreamer at this point was worried that, uh, or pretty certain that they were going to be jumped by these gangsters. In any case, the only way to get out of this alley was to walk back out um, the only <laughs> exit. And on along the way, they found a door, which they took them up some stairs and um, it was a fire exit apparently for um, an estate, what, what we would call the projects. Um, <laughs> the dreamer ended up at a house party and which was absolutely heaving with people when um, they had apparently a, a, a tattooed guy acting as a bouncer at the door who didn't actually want to let the dreamer and his friends in, however many they were, it's not certain, um, but certainly the, the dreamer, the cousin, and this um, Billy Eilish <laughs> look alike. But the bouncer apparently changed his mind once he saw the, the you know, the cute, cute white girl, <laughs> the Billy Eilish look alike, I guess, um, that was with them and decided he was going to play nice and to impress the girl. And so let them in. So the, that's the end of part two, the second dream. The third dream is, is much shorter. 
where the dreamer was um, at some kind of computer game demo or some kind of event where they were playing compu computer games. Um, the dreamer was not a gamer, whereas everybody else was, but was actually a guest, whether a, a guest of the cousin or of his own son, not, isn't certain. But whereas most people were at the event were using their phones as, as the controllers for the games, um, and, and on foot, they were all standing up. They offered the dreamer a chair and gave him a classic controller. And the dream ends there. Well, <laughs> there is, as I said, a lot going on in this dream. But um, uh, oh, as always, when dreams are, are dreamt in close proximity, there's something that will tie them together. So we'll just have to make our way through all of this stuff and see what actually ends up tying these, these different vignettes together. Starting with the first dream, you have these um, attacks on this Buddhist temple. Um, my first question was, when you say our temple, who is the we in this our temple? Were these attacks physical attacks or were they more philosophical or psychological attacks? What exactly, who exactly was attacking and what were they attacking exactly? Um, apparently the Sefu or Sifu um, or teacher had be is no longer able to defend um, this temple because he's become ill. Um, and is it is this this closure of the temple and dismantling of the shrine? How um, how does that feel to the dreamer? What does it what does it mean? What does it evoke for the dreamer to have to to take this this drastic action? And uh, what does the shrine itself represent? Um, what does this temple represent for the dreamer? Um, there's if um, you could look at uh, temples in various ways, and but one thing that occurred to me is that. Um, it says in the Bible, as it happens, that the body is the temple of the soul. So you can talk about physical, a physical building in terms of a temple, or you could be talking about the temple of the spirit, which is the body itself. And I would put to the dreamer here whether this was um, a more uh, spiritual kind of struggle or attack rather than a physical one um, and what that means for the dreamer. In the first part of the second dream, the dreamer's favorite team, which happens to be Arsenal, um, loses five to one to one of their, their London rivals. Um, it's sort of like they're both from, from well, one is from East London, one's from North North London, but it's sort of like the subway series for the Yankees and the Mets in New York, <laughs> um, you know, at opposite ends of the city, taking the train back and forth. So his, his team loses. And what does, what does the dreamer feel about that? Um, I mean, we've got it in the first dream, we've got a, um, a temple, an actual temple, a Buddhist temple being attacked. Um, then here you have um, uh, his his favorite team, in a sense, being attacked and defeated, um, with the idea in mind that for some people, football or soccer is like a religion um, for it for the fans, and these this bumping into the by by chance into the the um, dreamer's cousin. What does this what does this uh, cousin signify? And remember, people that appear in our dreams are not necessarily themselves. But what does this cousin signify for the dreamer? What does he represent? Um, have you in waking life actually been in contact with with a relative or cousin or someone, or thinking about being in contact with them? Um, my other thought about this is that 
this um, young man could represent the shadow of the dreamer himself, the unacknowledged, hidden, underdeveloped part of the the inner life of the dreamer. Um, then, which is usually the the our shadow is usually the the same sex as the dreamer, and um, can be of varying ages, but is usually a, a helpful friend. But sometimes can you know can be like <laughs> your worst enemy as well. Um, the um, what is the significance of your team being beaten? Um, and other than op the obvious five one score, sorry to keep rubbing in, rubbing it in. <laughs> My other half is a Man U fan. <laughs> anyway, but what is what does that defeat signify for the dreamer? Um, there's is there some area or part of the dreamer's life that feels like there's um, a sense of defeat um, of being well beaten. Um, just put that out there. Then in part two of this, the second dream, you have St. Paul's Cathedral, um, which is an actual cathedral, which holds services and has a churchyard with burials and all the rest of it. And it's an iconic symbol of London. Um, <laughs> so again, you're talking about, um, religion in an organized sense, but maybe in a broader sense, spirituality. Then <laughs> they're, while they're, they're hanging around St. Paul's Cathedral, they're parked up near an, an Ikea, which is another iconic symbol um, in terms of flat pack furniture from Sweden. So it, it, which can be like a religion <laughs> among some people, the people who you know, absolutely love Ikea. Um, there's also this play grave. Now, I'm not quite sure what that is, but I, I suspect that it's, it's a rave that's kind of a, a counter movement with regard to, to the COVID-19. So, um, but what does that signify for the dreamer? What is a play grave? Um, and though it sounds like an underground or illegal kind of activity. Um, and then this, you have this, this young woman leading um, the dreamer or accompanying the dreamer to this, this, this rave who looks a bit like the, the singer Billie Eilish. <laughs> what does she mean? What does she evoke for you, um, this young woman? Other than that she looks a bit like the, like the singer, what, meaning could she possibly have? Could she possibly be pointing in some way to relationship as your anima? That's something for you to consider. The, it's interesting that the young woman has, um, let's call her Billy Two, <laughs> that Billy Two says that things were gonna to start to kick off in the south of the city. And what occurred to me there were things were maybe going south or something was happening south of the border. Um, and I would ask the dreamer at this point, what's going on south of the border with you that it, perhaps in waking life that needs to be addressed? Um, it's, it's, but it is always the, this kind of um, going towards the, the lower end of things, the lower end of town. Um, the wrong side of the track, so to speak. Um, and in the midst of all of this, we've got gangsters. Um, gangsters who were young guys dressed up like what I it comes to mind for me is like somebody from Superfly movies. Um, <laughs> in a, but show up in a limo, which um, in my Re re recollection, most gangsters didn't show up in limos. Caddies, yes, but not limos. So it's not your usual gangster ride, but these were young guys who were kind of imitating their elders um, with this 70s style um, fur coats and what have you. Um, but we also all know that as well, that fashion turns and returns constantly. Now the dreamer is worried about these these young men, this gang of or, or gangsters, 
but the the cousin who's accompanying him isn't bothered in the least um and does the this this cousin know something that the 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 dreamer isn't aware of maybe that's the something for the dreamer to investigate the dreamer drives them in it drives his car into a dead end into an alleyway no way out and and in it's interesting because the uh, cul-de-sac literally means in french the ass of a bag so <laughs> they're stuck in in the, in the rear end of a of a of at a dead end so where i would ask does the dreamer feel that he might be at a dead end or at the you know at the very back end of something and needs to needs to find a way out the only way that the dreamer and the cousin were able to get out of this situation and ease the the, the dreamer's fear of being jumped was to to backtrack on foot and to um they happened to encounter a doorway leading up some stairs which turned out to be a, a fire exit that <laughs> um into a, a block of flats into a to a, a housing estate or a, a set of projects so they the dreamer and the cousin in essence left the lower world and ascended to a higher one um you could look at that from a physical point of view they went up some steps but you could also look at it from a psychological or even spiritual view that they were moving from a, a lower place to a higher place, a place perhaps with greater perspective. You can see better because you have, you can look down on things and see them from, from all at once from a distance. But in any case, um, they end up at a house party in, the, in, this, in these projects, um, which was absolutely jam packed. And there was a tattooed bouncer at the door um deciding of course who was going in and who wasn't and the dreamer and his cousin were actually were nixed but <laughs> the once the bouncer saw the pretty girl um the, billy too he decided he was going to make nice for her and let them in so what the, <laughs> the thought that came to me with this is that sex sells no matter what, no matter what you're trying to do, sex will sell. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's there's a, a bit of religion in here, too, if um, believe it or not, um, in that this young woman may be representative of what some people believe is the holy grail of womanhood. You, you know, she's blonde, she's cute. Um, so she's like the top of the line. So there, there's another kind of context of um, spirituality, of values, um, of religion. So that we'll, con we'll continue on from there. In the third dream, the uh, dreamer is a guest um, at a computer demonstration or convention of some kind. And he's not doesn't isn't quite sure whether it was it was his cousin that was he was the guest of or his own son, but in any case, um, here you have again for gamers it's like a religion. I mean, you know, with their their own kind of codes and their own kind of language. So it's it's generally um, considered a younger people's thing, though that that's not always the case, um, but. There was this something interesting here going on. While the ga gamers who were the um, habitués, if you will, um, the regular gamers, the younger people were using their, their phones and standing up while they were playing, the, they actually gave the dreamer a chair um, and a classic controller. I mean, <laughs> and what occurred to me there was that it is this kind of classic youth versus um, age uh, split going on. And how does the dreamer feel about that? I mean, they, they treated him almost as if he was a, he was a, a pensioner. 
<laughs> and needed a chair to sit down and play and a and a controller because maybe you know you don't have a fancy phone or you don't know how to use one i mean what was going on with that i mean that's kind of interesting um but I would ask here it the dreamer if there's an area of the dreamer's life that makes the dreamer feel old in some way or has there's something in the dreamer's life that has become old is just old and needs to go is there uh, with um is there terms in terms of who the dreamer is now is that is something have become old and passe and just needs to go that's a question for the dreamer to answer. But what links all of these dreams are um, religions, beliefs of one kind or another, whether you're talking about Buddhists, you're talking about Christians, you're talking about Jedis, soccer or gaming or sex. Um, they're, they're all things that people will put their faith in or believe in or not. Um, but there's there's change going on. What people are believing and putting their faith in is changing. And I wonder if there's there's something around that for the dreamer that that this shifting that things are crumbling or moving or in um, moving in a different direction and maybe not a, a necessarily necessarily desirable direction. Um, where perhaps are the dreamers' own beliefs, attitudes, perceptions changing and shifting? And what does that imply for, for the dreamer going forward? So there you have it. Like I said, it was a real mass of information and it could have been more to come out of that. But that's something for the dreamer to, to work on um, as they get through the pieces that I've already <laughs> that I've already provided. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Have a great rest of the week and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.